Hello and welcome people, this is me on Mir TV and we, this is the big discussion, it's not really a big discussion, but it is a discussion on who should replace Pep Guardiola if he were to leave. Now a couple of weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, I made a Pep in this Pep out like discussion kind of thing where I got some info from people on what they think if Pep should stay, if Pep should leave, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, and I decided, you know what, well, since we're getting closer to like the deadline where, um, where Pep is supposed to tell the team, which is... Um, after winter break, so actually before the winter break, when Pep is supposed to tell um, Romanega when, you know, he, if he's staying or if he's leaving. And we're getting closer and closer to that. Um, I wanted to do like another video on that. I, I want to try and keep the momentum up to see, you know, to, to see if, if, there, if it's a good thing or a bad thing if Pep stays. Obviously, like I said, I think that Pep should stay personally. But um, in case he were to leave, who would be a good replacement for him? Now, I asked a little bit on Twitter, and basically the overwhelming message was Ancelotti. Um, thanks to the people that actually answered, you know, you'll see the messages at the bottom here, like, eh, which, yeah. Um, but, you know, that was the overriding message, Ancelotti. Um, and looking at, the, looking at the coaches available, top, top coaches, like, coaches that would top for, for the, that coach that would coach for the top three teams, Ancelotti, Ancelotti is definitely one of the few... Um, that has really had that is really proven at the top level. He's won, I believe, three Champions Leagues, and in general, he's just been a great cup coach. He's been a great cup coach. Um, obviously, he recently coached Real Madrid to the La Decima, um, and in general, he's got the experience. He's currently on hiatus, so obviously, he's free. He's got the experience to do you know, to come in and uh, work. And now, with Klopp obviously um, going to Liverpool, there is. Um, because he was he was supposed to be the replacement for Pep Guardiola if Pep were to leave, but now that he's at Liverpool, obviously the whole question is: Is Ancelotti the only one that's there? Is Ancelotti the only one that could come in? Um, for me, there's there are three possible candidates. The first one is obviously Ancelotti, and I have to say that I like Ancelotti as, as a person. I, I'm always freaked out by him, um, just a little because of his eyebrows, like what his eyes like normal like that, and then it's just like one side is like. Argh. So every time he looks, it just looks like he's fucking straining at you like Argh. So that, that always freaks me out. That's why I can't look at his face because he just looks like he's being sarcastic all the time Which is like a hey. that, that that kind of look just a normal look like I Can't I can't do it, but it just freaks me out so much the way his eyes his eyebrows are um, I advise you go to Google right now um, And search for Ancelotti just search for Ancelotti um and his, his eyebrows, they just freak me out. <laughs> so that's one thing that I don't like about Ancelotti. Straight up, like, I really hate that. I've always hated that. You know, his, eyes, his eyebrows are just, are just scary. They're just scary, man. But that's the one thing I don't like about Ancel Ancelotti. The second thing I don't like, because I like said there are three things. The second thing I don't like, he won't play players, even if those players aren't in form. Now, the best case scenario for that was possibly Gareth Bale for Real Madrid. Um, he played Gareth Bale regardless that is that his form was garbage uh, straight up like he, he, he his form was terrible right and um Ancelotti he just kept playing him he was like yeah you know what I'll just keep playing you and eventually he'll get form back that didn't happen and he was like that for the whole season so you know he, he'll play players without uh, while the form is down without giving them a break or anything and that's the first that's the third thing that I don't like about him which is that he doesn't rotate much. Um, now, you could say that's because he was at Real Madrid. And if you look at our squad, the difference in our squad, we have the best squad. Um, we have a better squad than Real Madrid. And with Real Madrid, like, their 11 players, that their starting 11 are just on a totally different level than their bench 11, if you could call that. Um, so, the reserve, you know. Um, so, you could say that that's because of... That's, that might be the reason why. But, honestly, like, even, like, even when... I, I, even then, I don't think you know, we need a coach that is actually going to rotate a lot. We need a coach because we've got so many good players. So if we don't rotate, then our players will end up leaving us. So if you have, for example, let's make a let's make a hypothetical um, starting eleven. So you have Neuer, um, left back Alaba. Um, let's say you two center two center backs. Uh, you have Boateng and let's put uh, Benat here. There, actually, let, let's put Batch Duba there. Um, so obviously batch do then boating and um on the right you have lamb and then like uh, let's say we play a classical 4 3 3 um then you, as a holding midfielder you'll have 
I'm gonna say Javi um, Martinez, not Javi, Javi. Um, two two um, things are gonna be Thiago and Götze, and your front three is gonna be um, uh, Costa, Lewandowski, Robin. Now that leaves you, know, you that leaves Müller out, that leaves Götze out. You know, that leaves a lot of players out. Coman, Rafinha, you know, uh, Benatia. Like you have a lot of players being left out. Vidal, I didn't mention him. Um, so, so like I said, you have a lot of players left out. So it's like, what? Like, like why would they stay? You know, if if you don't get to play, why would you want to stay? If you could, like, if you even if you're a top team, right? If you don't get to play for that top team, what's the point of staying? Right, and it's just the way it is. So we we have a lot of players leaving us, and I don't think that he'd be the right choice unless unless like they say we're gonna give you the contract, but you have to rotate you have to rotate the squad on a decent level. If he, if Bayern does that, right? If that's in his contract, then I'm like, okay, fine, you know, let's go, let's let's have a let's have a look how it works out. But I want a coach that rotates his players. Um, so Bayern will have to make sure that he actually rotates his players, and I think Samuel would be the perfect person for that. He he would make sure that you know the players are getting rotated. Now, um, the second choice that I always think that people actually overlook is Favre. Now, I, lo I know what people are going to say. Ah, oh, Favre, look how he did this year. Look, look, look how bad he is doing. Uh, well, look how bad he did with Borussia Gladbach. And my, my answer to that is, um, look what he did with Borussia Mönchengladbach. You know, look at the positives that he did with Borussia Mönchengladbach. So they kept losing the best players, and he still kept developing them. He still kept improving them. So... Last year was well, well, the first time in the Champions League for how long? You know, they are a great team. It's not like it's not like they are um, they're our worst team ever. Yes, he yes they, they were really bad at the beginning of the season, but I think if he would have stayed, they would have still made top five. I honestly think that if he would have stayed, they would have made top five. So for me, it's just a case of maybe he was really um, low in confidence and he just like thought there's no point anymore and. Um, that he was like, yeah, I, I, I just want to get fired. So, yeah, let me do the worst for the job. I don't know. But I generally think that he is a top coach. I think that he could do wonders with a squad like Bayern Munich. Um, now, the thing is, I don't. He, he hasn't gotten European experience. That is the only negative. So, he hasn't obviously played in um, the Champions League. So, yeah, they did quite well in the Europa League. Although they lost to Sevilla um, last year. Where I, I think they shouldn't have lost. I mean, in, yeah, honestly, I don't think they should have lost. I watched that match. Um, Triara is absolutely amazing in that match I have to say that but I think that he could be a good coach for Bayern Munich now, obviously he lacks the experience he hasn't won a Champions League trophy um, but he could come in and be like a long term coach in, in that sense like he could build his own thing now obviously it depends if Bayern want that or if Bayern don't want that because the thing is that you, you have Lamb you, know, you have players that are there for like 2 more years 3 more years maximum um, that just want to win a Champions League again. So if you bring in a coach that wants to like develop and just be like there for a long term project, you know, to improve the team. If you have that, then um, you know, if you, like the players that want that just want to win the Champions League one more time before they retire, they might not actually be able to achieve that feat. Um, now, also the thing about Favre is that if he comes in and like has a goal, like a long term plan to improve us, there isn't much more improving. That he could possibly do, you know. I'll be honest, there's not much more improving. We're already at the top of football. Uh, us, Real Madrid, and Barcelona, we're already at the top of football, and we, out of all these three teams, we are the most consistent team. Maybe I don't know if we were the best or not. Um, I'm gonna leave. I won't. I won't even go there. I'm just gonna say we're equal to like all three of um, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Bayern Munich are all equal. We're the most consistent. Um, I don't know if we have the. I, 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 we have the best squad. If we have the best team, that's debatable. I mean, every team's going to say that, you know, that side has a better team, that side has a better team. I think we have the most balanced squad. I think we have the most balanced team. We have the mo we have the best squad. Um, but I don't know if we actually have the best team. The best, you know, yeah, yeah to an extent. I mean, I I do think um, we have the best team, but I don't want to get into that. Um like I said, Favre, there isn't, there isn't much that you can improve on in a nutshell. Um, it's just against the big teams, you know, that, that's the only thing that he'll have, be, he'll have to work on. Now, 
it'll be interesting to see like if he comes in um how he would do but i think that ancelotti at this point will be a better bet than Fabre. but the last person that i think that could come in and um i don't think many people have mentioned him either and he's a controversial one a little bit controversial but it's and i can't believe i'm saying this not because i hate him but because i just don't think that he's the kind of coach that should coach by Munich. Mourinho. Yes, Mourinho. I, I'll be honest here, I like and I hate Mourinho. I, I, I'm a bit torn up there. Um, but right now, his Chelsea side is doing really bad. And, um, you know, the club has issued a statement that they are fully behind him. And every time some, uh, every time a club says, oh, yeah, we are right behind our manager. We're not going to sack him. Two weeks later, he gets sacked. So, in case Mourinho gets sacked, if that happens, if that were to happen, um, he could come in, replace Pep Guardiola. I mean, that, that would be a story in itself. You know, come in to replace Pep Guardiola. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, I like Mourinho, but I don't know if his style would work for us. I mean, it would help a lot for our actual defenders they, are, they would learn a lot they would develop a lot more but his strategy is mainly focused on quick attacks which a lot of Bayern fans really want to see um, but it's also really build up on handling pressure and um, we have a few players that can handle pressure that can handle intense moments but not all our players are like 100% focused all the time and we wouldn't be playing to our strengths should I say because you, you have Neuer you have our defenders that like to push up like to help the play um, and with Mourinho, we re we really would look at a different um, tactical angle. We really like try. We really have to change our whole style. Mourinho, um, he's a great coach. I mean, top three coach in the world, maybe top two um, with Pep Guardiola, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know who's better. Like they both have their own philosophies. So I'm not gonna say your Pep is the best coach in the world. I'm not gonna say that Mourinho is the best coach in the world. They all have their own philosophy and they stick by it, which is what I really like. I like coaches that like to stick to the philosophy. And they just make it happen. That's basically, you know, what I want to see in a coach. And um, that's why I like Pep Guardiola so much. That's why I like Mourinho so much. Now, these are the three coaches that could really come in. Each with, obviously, their own faults. Ancelotti with his rotation policy. Uh, Farah with his lack of experience. And then Mourinho with his um, whole tactical way that he likes to play. So, with, with, his, old st with, with his style of brand, um, you could say. Now these are the three that I think are very likely, and here are three just you know, quick, um, just for last girls who I think could come in that people aren't really keeping an eye on. Now the first one, that's actually quite funny to say, um, is Pellegrini. You know, because if Pep Guardiola, if the rumors are true, if Pep Guardiola leaves and goes to City, that would mean that City would have a you know, City's coach who's currently Pellegrini would move to a club. Um, and obviously, with us losing Pep Guardiola, we might get Pellegrini. Now, he's not the greatest coach in the world, but he has done quite well. Um, he made City champions, and um, that is with a City. Well, that is with a City squad. Um, that's probably the best in the league, obviously. So, but he hasn't done it convincingly. So, obviously, that is also the negative that he's got the best squad in the Premier League, but he hasn't won it convincingly, and. Um, He's a little bit inconsistent, if I say so myself. But he's also done great wonders in like the Champions League. Not with City, not particularly with City, but with Malaga, who against Borussia Dortmund, um, 2012-2013, um, should have gone through. You know, should have been in the in the semi-finals with Malaga, and obviously Borussia Dortmund scored two goals in extra time to actually go through. Um, but besides that, he's actually done quite well with Malaga, and he's done reasonably reasonably well with City. I think that he could be a good um, candidate, but he's obviously not the best candidate. But you know, it doesn't matter at the moment because obviously um, he's just signed an extension with Manchester City. So who knows if you're, if Pep Guardiola is actually moving there. But that's just a speculation. The second coach that I think could come in is uh, Weinzel uh, from Augsburg. Now, he has done actually really well with Augsburg. You look at Augsburg, you know, one of the, low, one of the um, smallest budgets in the Bundesliga. And he's made them you know, in, in, go do well in the Europa League. Um, do well to get into the Europa League. Europa League. Now they've sold. Now they've sold most of the good players, and they're still doing reasonably well. Not so much in the Europa League, but um, for, for the budget, you know, they're doing too well. If that's the best, it's a little bit like Gladbach. A little bit like how Tuchel was um, with Mainz. So Weinzel, you know, I give him one or two more years, and then see um, if he would be a good fit for Bayern Munich. But obviously, if Pep Guardiola were to leave this season, 
then um, he might have to come in earlier than normal. Um, he'd be a little bit of a gamble, obviously lack of experience again, but maybe he'd be a good gamble, maybe. Um, and the last one that I think that people haven't actually mentioned at all, I, I mean, I literally haven't seen anyone mention him, is um, Schmidt. Schmidt, um, obviously he speaks German, coach of Leverkusen, has a very, very, very intense style. I mean, literally, a very intense style. So that's literally like pressing for 90 minutes a game. Uh, I don't know if our, our players could handle it, like especially our older players. Um, but it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see because um, Schmidt, for me, he's one of the best coaches in the world. The way he you know, basically helped that Leverkusen side come into a top 10 side, you know, um, it's just fan phenomenal. And I do think that um, if his side has more experience, if his Leverkusen side has maybe one or two more years experience in the Champions League, then they could become a force of nature. They, they could literally be one of the top... Um, they regularly get into like the last eight and like every second year they might get into the top four. That's I, they're basically, I think that they could basically become a Juventus sort of team, a Juventus, a PSG sort of team that are just always under, like always just there, but not quite there. That, that's the way I see Leverkusen. The only problem with Leverkusen is that, well, they're Leverkusen. Yeah, that's the only problem. Like they're Leverkusen. Um, if it's like a last minute of a game, like one on one with the keeper and they, they, they got past the keeper, then they'll miss the goal. Then they'll miss the goal from that far out. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't feel like that, that's why I think that he is a little bit underrated because he's he's got a squad that just a jinx in the best way to put it. Like they've got a, he's got a squad that are jinx. Um, he could have last year beaten Atletico Madrid, but because his squad is so jinxed, um, it's just the way it is. You know, it's just the way it is, and um, that nothing can be done about that. He would be. I wouldn't say he would be a gamble. But his style of play would be suicidal, and uh, yeah, it could work. Or by the end of the season, like the yeah, last part, of the, last part of the season, the players could be just so exhausted that um, he that that they wouldn't even be able to run in like the semi final or final of a Champions League. So they'd be like, oh, no, I can't run. Please, just stop this. It could be, yo. You never know. Um, I like his style of play. I think he's a great coach. Um, but our older players would struggle with that, and I don't know how you know because I don't. I do want to um, have Lamb, Robin, Ribery. I do. I still want to see them win one Champions League. I'm just you know, to end their career nicely. Um, now these are the three that people aren't mentioning that have a chance. I mentioned three that I think could, like uh, three that are definitely on the top list. Three that I think could happen, and here are three that are very unlikely to happen: Lila Razu, um, Zidane, um. And Lam. Like if, if Lam were to stop, like if, basically, if Pep Guardiola said, "Okay, I'm going to do a one-year extension contract, and um, I want Lam to be my assistant uh, manager, or my, you know, my assistant coach," um, then he could potentially take over. Now, I've seen a lot of people say Louis Van Hal. I was talking to someone today, and um, he said that Louis Van Hal could be a possibility. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think he's gonna come back. Um, and I know I, I, the same person I spoke today said Joachim Lue, um, who I think no, total bullshit. No, I I don't want him. I honestly don't want him. Um, I do rate him, but he hasn't actually won anything for club. That's the thing. He hasn't won anything for club. Yes, he won a World Cup. Yes, he's done really well with Bayern Munich. Uh, really well with Germany. Same thing, Bayern Munich, Germany. Yeah, essentially. Um, but he isn't a club coach in my opinion. He's a cup coach. Which would well would which would work well for like Champions League DFB Pokal, but he's not really a club coach, and he already already stated that he wants to win the Euros before he does anything else. If he's gonna extend his contract or stop his contract, so anyway, who do you guys think? Um, I listed you a few names, nine nine names here or ten essentially if you count Louis Van Hal, and uh, I just want to know what you guys think. Like, if Pep were to leave, who do you guys think should come in? But this was me on TV. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, and have a nice day. Oh yeah.